Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 49 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we are talking about the choice for Australian ultra high net worth investors who are investing in fintech. Do they either invest further into existing cloud-based infrastructure or its alternative, which is known as edge computing? Hi, Dave. It's great to have you back on the Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be back. And uh, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Hopefully we can clear up some misconceptions that are out there right now. Truly misconceptions. Absolutely. And so look, you know, edge versus cloud computing, which is the best for investment? And actually, do you see this as the right kind of question we should be asking? <laughs> Oh, surprisingly, no. Um, and this is one of the things I see as a um, almost a fake news thing, if I, if I uh, care to use that term for the first time on the show. Uh, and it's really just kind of a mis misunderstanding. I think people see edge computing coming along and they think it to be a competitive or replacement for the cloud computing patterns and cloud computing technology, where that's not the case at all. You know, edge computing is typically going to be an IoT related thing, and it's about pushing the processing closer to where the data is going to be gathered so we can make instant decisions without returning information directly back to a centralized processing system, such as, a, some, as something that exists in the cloud. So cloud computing and edge computing are completely complementary, and the ability to kind of try to separate them and kind of look at them as to, you know, one's going to defeat the other uh, is logical. And I ran and rave about this, and other people in the business ran and rave about this. But for some reason, when you get out in the business press, it seems still to be the case. And the problem is, is that the C-suite folks read these papers, you know, read this information. And I, I get this question all the time. And it's something I have to, you know, keep revisiting. And it's, you know, hopefully people are going to get smarter going forward, but it doesn't seem to be the case. And so we're confusing people out there to the point of, uh, Unproduct, unproductive kinds of ends. In other words, we're not getting to uh, what the use is for each kind of technology out there. I'm not worried about the investors as much, but I'm worried about the enterprises that are consuming this stuff and not necessarily understanding what they're doing with the technology that they're asking for. And so this is almost very much like you know cloud computing back in uh, you know 2008. You know, people, you know, looked at it as something that was a competitive to every legacy system that exists in the inner enterprise. And that wasn't the case at all. It's the ability to kind of enhance stuff with existing new technology and basically finding a place for it. And this is very much the same thing. And we're going to see this in terms of mobile computing. We're going to see this in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the 5G networks as they start to pick up speed, uh, speed, the ability to kind of place processing down at the edges of those. This is going to become much more pervasive in the market. But it's the wrong question to ask. And I think that people really need to come around to, you know, thinking logically and properly about this stuff so they don't make mistakes. I'm sure that, you know, we probably wasted a billion dollars so, so far. Uh, just in productivity as people kind of spin this question around within the enterprise conference rooms. Yeah, we love to throw money at things and, and waste money on ideas and where people have just misconceived the whole concept of what it is. I, I think that uh, seems to be a general sort of faux pas in, uh, in, many, in many industries when it comes to, to tech. But yeah, look, you're absolutely right. You know, they, they do very much complement each other and you can't have one without the other and you need the, the cloud infrastructure for edge to work. And, and so very true with what you said, you know, it's, it's not all information needs to go back to a, a main data center. It can, you know, as long as there's, there's a way of data being translated closer to the point of collection you know that's where edge really steps into its own and and i think from an investor point of view from what i've read and and, and from what i've seen as well is that you know you've got the bigger companies such as like aws as, a, as an example are swallowing up the smaller startups that are developing edge softwares that are um, you know going to be influential so they're sort of jumping ahead of the game where they're, they're swallowing up those smaller tech startups so i guess the if we if we're going to um i sort of uh, uh pre pre-pose this uh, question with regards to investors, it would be, you know, look for the startups which are, have got the, the, the opportunity to be swallowed up by the, the bigger companies. I think that would be a, a little bit of advice there. But there's a number of startups like Vapor, you know, IO, Edge Micro, Cloudflare, Packet, 
packet and, and, and things like that, which are really, you know, doing things when it comes to edge. And I think that's really cool because, you know, it's going to be there. There's data that's been collected, you know, from all points. And as you say, not everything needs to go back to the hub. So look, it's interesting times for edge. I think it's an exciting time as well. I know yourself and Ron Batcher and, and we did a show a couple of weeks ago when Ron came back on again, you know, we covered some really great points on edge. So, I mean, in the next sort of two years, Dave, where do you see it going? I think that the, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think the edge marketplace is going to explode. I think we need to have people who are thinking about how to move some of the processing out of the cloud and, and to the endpoints. And I think what needs to be solved, the problem that really needs to be solved, number one, standardization and how we're doing edge computing. You know, how we're going to process data, how we're going to do analytical processing, things like that. But also the ability to kind of abstract some of the cloud services into the edge services. And one of the things I see with AWS, and they have an edge-based offering now, uh, I'm sure Azure is going to have one pretty soon. I'm sure Google's going to have one pretty soon. Alibaba's going to have one pretty soon. Is they kind of see this as a way to expand their, in, their, their uh, impact into the marketplace with their cloud-based systems. And so they're making it easier for these edge-based systems to reach back in the cloud and leverage what they need. And even if it means putting some of the processing and storage you know, out on these edge devices versus putting it in the cloud, the cloud providers are going to make a bunch of money in basically providing these services to enable these devices or these edge computing devices to make it happen. At the same account, we have what I call an innovation uh, a vacuum right now in the edge space. I think we don't know what we're doing with data yet in a consistent way. Uh, we don't know what we're doing with processing. We don't know what we're doing with network management. We don't know what we're doing with security, which is a huge issue right now with edge-based computing and IoT in general. And it's now's the time for these companies to actually step up, and a lot of them are doing it, and some of the ones you've, you listed I've, I've already looked at, to step up and kind of take things to the next level in terms of the innovation that's going to occur in the edge. And do so with cloud in mind really is a core component and do so with usability in mind. So is this going to be an IoT based issue? Is this going to be, you know, a mobile based issue? Is this going to be, you know, security? You know, all those things really kind of need to be defined. And I, I think there's a lack of thought leadership. There's lack of consistent uh, messages. There's lack of consistent definitions and architecture in the edge space, very much like there was in the cloud space in 2008. And I think it's really, you know, high time of the next year or so to really kind of close that gap. And so looking for the edge providers to actually make that happen and we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, exciting times, exciting times. Well, look, it moves us on nicely to your top three tips around sort of edge and cloud computing, Dave. So be happy to listen to those, it'd be great. Yeah, number one, understand that IoT and cloud computing are not mutually exclusive. Um, I, I get this all the time, and it's a fairly frustrating question at this point, but you have to think of them as, as uh, puzzle pieces. Um, you know, cloud computing is not mutually exclusive with databases, it's not mutually exclusive with legacy systems, not mutually exclusive with legacy enterprise networks. Uh, it's able to leverage this kind of securities, and the ability to kind of work and play well with other things is kind of a critical success factor for any technology, and edge computing is no different. So keep that in mind. Edge computing, I think, is going to be a tactical issue to solve, at least initially. And so we're not thinking about this as the place to put all the enterprise data and all the enterprise processing. Um, we're thinking about this as really kind of a tactical way to look at some of the, the cool things we can do within the devices, within the computers that sit next to the data where the data is being gathered. In the case in point, you know, an edge-based device, you know, sitting in an airplane is going to do a lot of good because it's able to process information instantaneously as if it's going back to a, you know, a centralized, you know, cloud processing hub and return information back to the pilots of the plane as well as gather information on long going in terms of, um, you know, patterns of, uh, of behavior that leads to repairs and failures and things like that. So it's able to interact in a tactical way with the people who are flying the plane. And when the thing lands and connects up to the Wi-Fi network, it's able to communicate a larger intelligence back to a single, single brain that's able to really kind of make core uh, in, in core pattern recognitions in terms of, you know, causality in terms of how things are failing and keeping planes in the sky. And I think that's going to be those sorts of things replicated in the healthcare and replicated in the financial industry are really going to make uh, edge computing take off because we're doing things quicker and faster and easier and cheaper. Cloud, I think, is strategic. And so if you look at cloud and, you know, the name cloud is kind of hard, you know, everybody defines it differently, but 
it's really about the centralization and making sense of data. It's really about the ability to get your core processes in the same system. It's really about keeping your core services in the same system. It's really about meshing and syncing with enterprise legacy systems, security systems, governance systems. So you have to think about them in two kind of two different dimensions. So cloud computing kind of is a mothership. Uh, edge computing is a way in which we can solve tactical issues better and basically provide better services to the end user, especially if we're dealing with device level stuff, which you know, nine times out of 10 with edge computing we are. Great top tips, Dave, and thanks for being part of the Australia show. Awesome as ever. It's always a pleasure, stay at the edge. Yeah, exactly. And look, I know that yourself and uh, we, we, we discussed with uh, Ron Batra, I think it was, uh, a couple of weeks back now. So we, I think we're going to be looking at doing some shows around this, aren't we? Uh, IoT and Edge. Uh, I think we, we kind of had a, an offline uh, chat with Ron about developing some shows around that. So that'll be interesting. We'll put some put together some interesting content around Edge because it's, uh, it's really going to blow up, I think, 2019 more so than it uh, already has now. What do you think? No, I, I think it is. I think in 2019, 2020, it's probably going to be one of the hottest spaces out there along with machine learning and serverless computing and, and container-based computing. Um, and But I think edge computing is going to have more of a benefit you know, to efficiency and the ability to kind of get things out there in a faster way. So we're going to be able to do more good with the technology in a shorter period of time. We just need to start thinking about the hard problems that really edge computing needs to solve. I don't think we're doing that enough right now. So Hey, doing a couple of shows, that's spot on. It's the right thing to do. Yeah, excellent. Thanks, Dave. And thanks again for being part of the show this week. It's always a pleasure. Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really do hope you enjoyed watching this week's show or listening to this week's show, because obviously this is a podcast as well. So that's on Stitcher and iTunes. Uh, in, in the description box, there's links for all of that stuff. So you can check that out and uh, join us. Be a part of us on social media. Dave's on Twitter, which is at David Linfigan. Uh, I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Heliard. We're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, obviously Twitter, all of the social media platforms. So check that out. Also, there's links for the blogs that we de- we, uh, we uh, work with Dave on as well. So there's some great exclusive content there. Please check those out. Uh, Dave puts a lot of work and effort into those and we get those published as regularly as we can on a weekly basis at least. Uh, So check those out, they're pretty cool. And remember to like, subscribe to the channel and share these videos with your friends and colleagues because all that support is always really, uh, truly appreciated. Uh, And remember to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on on future videos coming up and those future shows with Ron Batra and other special guests. So again, thanks for watching and until next week.